Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how you can animate your siren head character and give it a nice walk cycle animation. Today I'm only going to be focusing on the lower half of the body because it ends up being quite a bit of work, but next week we'll finish up with the arms and head and really sell that animation with some secondary movement. So, the simple technique to animate characters is to take a video and act like you want the characters to act that you're going to animate. And this way you have some really nice video reference, and that way you don't have to just guess how characters are going to act in your scene. So a good example of this is what I'm about to do now. Now remember, when you're doing this technique, you don't really have to worry about how the shot looks as long as your actor is in frame and you can see everything they're doing. It doesn't matter if it's diagonal footage, it doesn't matter if it's raining out, it doesn't matter if you use your phone, it doesn't matter if you're using a $20,000 camera, although that would be a little bit excessive. The main idea is to just capture the movement of what your character is doing. And as I was acting this, I was pretending I was like 25 feet tall and that everything beneath me was kind of where I was looking around and when you're that big, you probably want to be moving a little bit slowly, so that's why I was moving a little bit slowly. Now there are a lot of bugs swarming me out here, so I'm probably going to get back inside to the computer, and then we can actually animate. So here we are, back in a comfortable digital space, so let's import that reference animation. I'm going to split the window up here, and over here I'm just going to go to my movie clip editor, and open that up. I switched that so that it was an image sequence, so I'm going to go A to select all, and then open clip. And you can see it's fairly narrow here, so I'm just going to go T and N to get rid of the panels there. And this is just going to be our reference animation. And as we scrub through here, you can kind of see it's working very nice. Probably going to end right about here, so I'm going to go playback and set end frame. So the first thing to realize when we start animating is that this is a lot of movement going on here. So a technique that I like to use is where I just animate the legs and body first, and then I work on the other stuff as I go along, and just add in more and more detail as we go. That way we don't get caught up just trying to do everything all at once. Now as you can see here, I've just added in a quick ground plane. We can grab that on the y-axis, and now we have something to walk along, so that's pretty good. Now with this here, we can just kind of start copying the pose of what is going on here. So if we select our rig and go pose mode, I'm just going to go into front view and just kind of take a look and start matching this stuff up. So you can see the feet are spread apart a little bit more than this is. So I'm just going to grab these and move them apart. Grab this main body bone, which once again has control over everything going on. I'm going to grab that on the z-axis and move it down a little bit. If we got the move tool here, you can see these nice little gizmo show up, and I really like how easy it is to use this when you're animating, so that's pretty helpful. And I'm just going to move the feet out. Pretty much the idea here is just to start by copying the main pose going on there, which is actually not that difficult. There we go. Arms are looking fairly loose now, a little bit more natural than they were before. And the head is down here in the reference, so what I'm going to do here is actually just make it so that these two horns are facing a little bit forward and down. But just so you're aware, to rotate these, I'm hitting R, and then when you hit R twice, that gives this kind of trackball control, which is really nice. And the head is down at the moment here, so I'm just going to start by bending the neck and moving that down a little bit. Now something to be aware of is that for most of this, I'm going to be using automatic keyframes. So this little button down here, when we press that button and then we add a transform to one of the bones, so if I just go G and then left mouse button to set that there, um, if we look here in the timeline, I had to use the middle mouse button to just pan up real quick so you can actually see the keyframe. But you can see here we have this orange keyframe and that means this foot is stuck here at this point in time. Now let's do this to the other foot here. Grab and click. And then let's also do this to the main bone here in the body. So we'll grab and click, and that is all set up. Now as we scrub along here in the footage, you can see the weight starting to shift and the feet starting to move, so that's just what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to use the two foot bones and this main weight shifting bone just to do the basic first pass and get a nice walk cycle going. Alright, so the weight is starting to shift pretty nicely. I'm going to grab this foot and move it out in front. I like to go into side view to do that, so I just get a pretty good idea of what's going on. The first footstep should be around here, and then if we just shift the weight to match up with that, it will end up going something like that. And eventually, I'm going to add in a pass in between these two frames where the foot gets picked up, but right now, it's just going to look like he's wearing roller skates or something. Don't forget to set the position of his left foot before you pick that up. So just hitting G and clicking so it sticks there, and we've got this keyframe. And then about at this point, you can see my reference moves his other foot. And I don't know why I'm talking in third person. It's obviously me doing that, so it's kind of strange. Whoa. As you can see here, the knees are starting to take off. I'm going to select those with the box select and just go G at this point. And then out here, we're going to have a keyframe of them up there. Cool. So they're still pointing in the right direction. Now, as you can see here, if we look in front view, the weight of the character is still off to the side here. And then when he sets his foot down, it's balanced again. So I'm going to move this back where it's balanced and rotate it so that it is pretty much good. Another thing to keep in mind is as the legs step, the body will actually rotate a little bit. So I'm going to go like this from the top view, just slightly. And the weight is shifted again here, so I'm going to rotate that back. In case you weren't aware, animation takes a lot of time. And if you're not sure where your keyframes went for some reason, that probably means your bones are deselected. So I'm going to hit A to select everything. And I just want to move this point over a little bit. So I'm going to hit Shift S and current frame so that my keyframe snaps to where my cursor is. And you can see I forgot this foot is supposed to stay there for a minute. So I'm going to select this keyframe, looking at my reference image. And this is the left foot, I believe. It's supposed to stick there until that point this point. So I'm going to duplicate it with Shift D and just move it once again to my cursor. That way the foot sticks. It still slides a little bit, but we'll fix that in a minute when we put in between keyframes. And this is the last time our foot will be planted, so I'm going to grab it once more. And it's a little bit shorter here, so somewhere around there. And then once again, just moving the whole body right up there. And once again, moving the knee bones right up there. Cool. And as you can see, at this point, our character just kind of stands there for a second and looks around. So I'm going to stop there. We have a basic walk cycle going. Let's add in a few more layers to that just so that it looks a little bit better. So first layer is weight shifting, and that is just going to be with our main bone for the body here. So as you can see, we already started with that, but then we just kind of glossed over it a little bit. In orthographic view, it looks really silly. Let's hit 5 on our number pad so that it will go out and we can actually see what's going on here. All right. Weight shifts over here. Weight shifts back. That's good. And at this point, we want our weight to shift in between frames when the foot is picked up. So I'm going to grab the main body part and just scooch it over here and then just rotate it a little bit with R. Nice, and then it goes back to normal, slightly rotated. Here at this point, we want it to be slightly back over. He's picking up a little bit of speed, so he doesn't have to lean quite as much. And then right about here, we actually should be having it lean back the other way a tiny bit more.
and quite a bit more at this point. Now if you haven't picked it up yet, I'm a pretty terrible animator. But that said, the really sweet thing about this technique is I don't really need to be a good animator because I can just look at what the reference is doing and if I copy that well, it will be pretty realistic. And when you get to this point, it pretty much stops and then the weight shifts a tiny bit from here to here. So I'm just going to take this top view and just scooch it over so that the weight is resting more on the front leg here. Very good. And that just kind of indicates that he's slowing down. And also, if you look closely, the right foot here at the end just shifts over a little bit on the toe, which is a little bit hard to do with our basic rig here, but that's okay, we can still do it. Take this point, that's when it starts, so grab, and then set it at this point. I'm just going to move it around on this axis real quick and rotate it. There we go. A little heel shift for you. Very nice. So it's things like this little heel shift that you add in because of the reference that you just never would have thought would have been there if you were just kind of animating it by your imagination. And if you take a look here at the first pass, we definitely have a walking animation going on, so that's pretty great. There are quite a few more layers we need to add in if we want it to look a little bit more believable. So what I'm going to do now is just add some mid-steps where the feet actually pick up instead of just sliding across the ground. And once again, if we take a good look at our reference video, that gives us a pretty good idea of when the feet need to be lifted up and when they need to be set down. So from side view, I'm just going to go three on my number pad to get into side view. I'm just going to look here real closely. The foot is at the highest at about this point here. So I'm going to take that up on the z-axis. And if you want, you can even start animating the tilt of the foot. I think it might be rotated like this a little bit. And at this point, it might be rotated down a little bit. There we go. Cool. And we can just keep focusing on this foot if we want. So up a little bit. Point the toe a little bit. Move along. And right here, we want it to be, once again, up a little bit. And then it plants. But before it plants, the foot is facing the other way. So it goes heel and then toe. Nice. And if you do animation in layers like this, and with reference like this, you really get some nice stuff. And then you can see we've got our little heel animation there that we put in, and that is pretty good. Now if we take a look at this animation, play it back, one foot looks great and the other looks really lame. So we're going to work on the other foot now. So once again, from the top, I'll probably time lapse this so you don't have to watch the whole thing, but starting with the right foot now, or the left foot, depending on how you look at it. And I haven't really thought about it before, but this is when the grid with Blender really comes in handy. So you can see increments pretty nicely. So, I've got both of the feet working now. As you can see, if I scrub through here, it looks like they're walking. Very nice. And I was keeping in mind as I was doing my reference footage that this is a very big creature and would probably move a little bit slow. So I'm just going to hang on to that, and that might even add a little bit more suspense in the animation. So now, if we want to keep working with the lower body, to finish off here, what I'm going to do is the hip bone area. And this, you can't really see in the reference animation just because I'm wearing such a long shirt. But if you think about it, it's probably going to be when it's resting on one leg. Just making it so that this, if you think about this kind of supporting the body, will probably be going like this a little bit to the side. Not quite that much. A little bit goes a really long way here in this case. 
But at the start again, if we zero that out, Alt R will zero it out. And then just some very subtle stuff going on. Also, when you're in a pose where the leg is forwards, probably the hip bone would be rotated. So just think about that as well. I'm going to go RZ to rotate that a little here. And there we go. Very nice. And now when it's the other way, in the mid pose, when all the weight is resting on this leg, I'm just going to go into front view and rotate it back the other way. If we go Alt R, once again, that'll reset the rotation. And something like that is probably good. All right, we have a nice little ambling walk cycle going on here. And right now this doesn't look super realistic and it probably could use a little bit more polish. The main reason why it doesn't look realistic is just because the arms are completely stiff and they're not reacting to anything that the weight is doing. And in the next tutorial, I'll probably go over the upper half of the body and a lot of what we'll do there will really sell the realism. If you feel like animating this model yourself, there's a link in the description that has the download for it on my Gumroad. And this is priced for $1 just because the file size is too large to be free. But if you use the discount code BOI, B-O-I, at checkout, then you can get it for free. If you found this helpful and you'd like to see more tutorials like it, and you'd like to catch next week's tutorial, there is a link in the description that says Free Hydraulic Kit Bash Elements. And what happens when you click that link is it'll sign you up for my email list. I'll make sure the first thing I send you are a pack of Hydraulic Kit Bash Elements made for Blender users like yourself. And these just give you a little bit of a jump start when you're working on mechanical projects. As well as that, every week when I post a tutorial, I just mail out to that email list and let everybody know so that they're up to date on tutorials. But besides that, I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers! What the fruit? My headphones fell out.